What happened to Grog Strongjaw? Grog chose to embrace retirement in Westrun, where he lives with his best pal, Pike Trickfoot. He lived rent-free at her house for a while, the Red House of Trickfoot. In his adventuring retirement, he's realized he needs to sharpen his mind like his blade. He spends a lot of time learning to read and strengthen his mental capacities. When he's not learning about colors, shapes, and words, Grog hosts an event called the Luncheon of Champions. He puts his newfound literacy to the test as he sends handwritten letters to the strongest warriors in all the land, inviting them to duke it out and brawl until the winner emerges. After the battle is over, the combatants join Grog for lunch and ale. Grog's kinship with Pike prompted Scanlan to ask Grog for permission before accepting Pike's marriage proposal. At Pike and Scanlan's wedding, Grog carried Scanlan down the aisle. Grog's challenge rating is 18, and he wields the Titan Stone Knuckles, a vestige of divergence, and a blood axe and dwarven thrower. Keyleth made a brief appearance in Campaign 2, and she's a quest giver to Orem in Campaign 3. Keyleth's druidic nature has preserved her youth. She doesn't look to have aged a day. Keyleth rose to the Voice of the Tempest, leader of the Arashari. Thanks to Keyleth's leadership and her acting as an ambassador, the Ashari have become more integrated with other communities. Percy has helped Keyleth to create windmills for the Arashari and Zephra. Several of the windmills are used to refine Whitestone Residuum, and the material is used to create magic items and arm Ashari Sky Dancers. During the events of Campaign 2, Keyleth's mother, Vilia, returned after disappearing during her Aramente trial, where she lost her leg to a kraken and narrowly escaped. Vilia now helps Keyleth in any way she can. Keyleth's home away from home is in Whitestone, near Greyhunt Manor. She created a hidden trail from the manor called the Snowdrop Memorial Trail, maintained by Vexalia. The trail leads to the Greyfield, where a shrine to the Matron of Ravens is. On the trail, there is no memorial plaque, but it's on this trail that Keyleth can remember her companion Vaxeldon. Though she does not adventure anymore, preferring to work through those she trusts or hires, she would heed the call if an archdruid should be needed. Her stat block challenge rating is 18, but I'd say she's certainly more powerful than that. She wields her staff, Spire of Conflux, a vestige of divergence, though rumors say she seeks to give it to someone worthy and capable of doing good in small ways. Percy expressed in his old age how he's grateful to have survived his hardships. He would have regretted dying as the person he was when he was driven by vengeance. Percy has five children with his dear Vexalia. Percy's primary focus these days is on his family and on Whitestone. He feels unease about his invention of firearms, so he turns his tinkering now to things that bring joy. His greatest achievement is a clock tower called the Heart of Whitestone. The clock tower is Percy's favorite invention, and he tinkers with it often, installing new features and embellishments. It tracks astral movement and keeps a calendar, including individual movements for holidays. Rumor has it among scholars that Percy's most dangerous inventions are stored in a vault inside the clock tower. Despite his place as a governor of Whitestone, he prefers to spend his time and energy creating. Among his inventive marvels are street lights, powered by Whitestone's underground acid pools, essentially a power grid, time-telling watches, and the windmill network of Zephra for the Arashari. He has engineered Whitestone's iconic skyport. The light system he created in Whitestone creates a green glow through much of the city. Along with his sister Cassandra, Percy oversees the new system of government in Whitestone, the Chamber of Whitestone. The castle's gardens are publicly accessible except for the Widow's Garden that Percy has revived and cultivated with Keyleth's horticultural assistance. This walled garden was once a menagerie of poisonous plants that Melanie de Rolo, Percy's ancestor, had cultivated to slowly poison her husband. Percy's long-range rifles have become infamous tools of the Whitestone Rifle Corps. They are rarely permitted to wield the deadly firearms outside of Whitestone for fear of the technology falling into the hands of enemies. Percy has used inlaid whitestone to preserve the firearms from wear and tear, and marksmen are trained to meticulously care for their rifles. Losing a rifle will mean they cannot return to whitestone until it's recovered. The hunters are honor-bound to retrieve any whitestone firearm that is discovered outside the city. Percival takes care to make sure corruption does not enter the hunters' ranks seeing them as a necessary evil as much as the firearms he created. One of Whitestone's modern challenges has been to deal with remnants, cultists of the Whispered One, and followers of the Briarwoods who would see Whitestone taken again. They dwell secretly in the Alabaster Sierras despite being hunted by the Grey Hunters. Together with Vexalia, Percival prefers to stop crime not by punishing criminals, but by dealing with poverty and suffering. Criminals are preferably rehabilitated, though some still warrant punishment. Percival's stat block gives him a challenge rating of 18. Percy wears Cabal's Ruin, a vestige of divergent. He also keeps his firearms Animus and Bad News handy. After Willand Trickfoot passed away, the Red House of Trickfoot was left to Pike. There she lived with Grog for a time until she proposed marriage to Scanlan, and he moved in. That's right, Pike eventually returned Scanlan's romantic interest. They now have two children together in Westrun. 
The children were born within a year of each other. Their names are Juniper, after Scanlan's mother, and Willendildon, Juni and Wax. Willand for Willand Trickfoot, and Ildon for Vaxildon. When the children grew old enough to venture out to school, Pike and Scanlan ended their relationship with sad smiles. They promised to always be best friends, and they've lived up to that promise. They still end up sleeping together once in a while, but their lives have taken them in different paths. With kids away at school and Scanlan no longer around, Pike moved to Whitestone and built a temple to the Everlight in the Temple Ward. She spends most of her time there, tending gardens and helping visitors. The temple is called the Hearth of the Everlight. Though the temple is used for normal religious studies and ceremonies, it's also a place for feasts and revelries. She frequents the Slayer's Cake Bakery and she makes sure the bakers live up to the standard of their reputation. When Keyleth is at her home in Whitestone, Pike enjoys stopping by for pastries and catching up. Pike's stat block gives her a challenge rating of 18. She wears Plate of the Dawn Martyr armor, a vestige of divergence. She also has a Mace of Disruption. After stopping the Whispered One, Scanlan's deeds spread throughout the lands. He made sure of that. Bards would be in error if they didn't know what Scanlan had supposedly done. Scanlan married Pike after she proposed. I mentioned the children they had in Pike's epilogue, and the eventual divorce of Pike and Scanlan as they amicably split. Scanlan being single again is getting to be an old gnome with a bigger belly and a retreating hairline, nothing a comb-over can't fix. His illusion magic keeps him looking young when he needs to look the part of the young, charismatic Scanlan. He also grew a mustache, which he believes makes him look distinguished. He started a business with his pre-Pike daughter, Kaylee. The trading business is called Meat Man Imports and Sex Points. <laughs> yep, that's the name of it. They do business in Ankarel, a warm place to spend winter seasons, but the job keeps Scanlan traveling around to sing songs of Vox Machina around Exandria. Scanlan took the time to send expensive items to Sybil, Kaylee's mother, to make sure she was taken care of. He also paid for Kaylee to be educated at the Alabaster Lyceum, located in Amman. The staff block for Scanlan has met a challenge rating of 15. <laughs> The lowest of all the original Vox Machina player characters. He wields the Vestige of Divergence Myth Carver, his blade. After the events of Campaign 1, Vax was able to bid farewell to his loved ones. His borrowed time was up. He would make one last appearance as himself at Vex's wedding when Scanlan used his last wish to request his appearance. He told his friends and family to live on, and he thanked them. The Champion of Ravens is not Vaxeldon anymore, though Vax's soul dwells within him. Serving the Matron of Ravens as the Champion of Ravens, his mortal appearances are rare. He carries out the will of the Matron of Ravens against those who pervert the natural oblivion that is death. For those who fear death, the Champion of Ravens may appear as an act of kindness. His kind soul soothes their souls as he shepherds them from the mortal realm. Vaxeldon, as the Champion of of Ravens has a challenge rating of 21. He wields his dagger, Whisper, a vestige of divergence. He dons Deathwalker's ward with its powers from the Matron of Ravens. Vexalia sits today as the Master of Commerce on the Taldore Council. She is also Whitestone's Grand Mistress of the Greyhunt and a champion of the Dawnfather. Many of my notes on her I will reference back to Percy's epilogue, as Vexalia naturally came up in that epilogue quite a bit. Vex is a mother to five children, though she has a few gray hairs. She's still very much her frugal, charming, flirtatious self. Trinket remains by Vexalia's side. Lord Trinket's public park was created in Whitestone at Vex's request. The park is decorated with a marble statue of the beloved bear, Trinket. Vex goes to the park to play with Trinket when she finds the time. Trinket has become slower in his old age, but he keeps up with his young cubs as they play. Vex often brings her children to play with her ursine companion. Vexalia serves as the mistress of the Grey Hunt, overseeing the elite fighters of the namesake. Though she no longer adventures, she does accompany the Grey Hunters to eliminate substantial threats to Talidore's peace and prosperity. The children of Vexalia and Percy are named thusly. Vesper Elaine de Rollo, Gwendolyn Zara Melanie von Musel de Rollo, I might be butchering these names, I'm sorry, Wolf Christoph de Rollo, Leona Pike de Rollo, and Vaxeldon Frederick de Rollo. Their youngest child is their daughter, Gwendolyn, who was born as a tiefling due to Percy's involvement with fiends. Vexalia's stat block indicates that her challenge rating is 18. She wields Fenthros, her longbow vestige of divergence. Trinket's challenge rating is 5, and he is drawn to Vex's demiplane in the Raven's slumber when Trinket is reduced to 0 hit points. Fox Machina founded a bakery called the Slayer's Bake, a clever reference to the Slayer's Take organization from Campaign 1. The gang often reunites in Whitestone during the summer when Scanlan appears for his and Pike's favorite season. It's a time for simple pleasures as they eat and relax together. Their children swap stories about their odd parents. The members of Vox Machina will always have their lives intertwined somewhat, and that's the way they prefer it. Will Vox Machina ever team up again when Exandria or Tal'Dore require their greatest heroes? Time will tell. For now, they live their lives and do their best to follow the paths before them. Let me know 
if I missed any details in their epilogues that are worth noting. If you want some more critical role content, I've got a theory video about Imogen from Campaign 3 that you can check out here. Otherwise, this channel is full of general D&D 5th edition mechanics crunching and role playing ideas. My wife and I have this channel and the website flutesloot.com together. And on that website, there's an article that accompanies this video. Basically, my script for it is that article. We hope you'll subscribe and check out our future videos, and we'll see you then. Bye.